Her job was to document the war in Iraq and other locations in the Middle East. As an Air Force combat photographer, it was something she was passionate about despite the dangerous nature of the job. During her first deployment to Iraq in 2003, Charleston veteran Stacy Pearsall was assigned to document C-17 medical evacuation missions at the Saddam Hussein International Airport. It wasn't really until I, I got my ground deployment orders to Iraq um, later that year that I really experienced combat firsthand. You know, the bullets flying or mortars and roadside bombs. Then, several years and countless missions later, Pearsall experienced a day that stands out in her memory. This was when Bush ordered the surge. Basically what was happening was the surge was working. All the guys were, were, all the bad guys were fleeing from Baghdad, but they were fleeing to one isolated location, which was in a town called Bakuba, and all of its outlying cities in the Diyala province. So it was becoming, quickly becoming a mess. Ultimately, the first cab that was holding ground there, um, it was just them and they were losing like two or three guys um, a week and it was getting worse. She was assigned to work with Task Force 112 of the 1st Cavalry Division and the 520th Striker Brigade in Iraq's Diyala province. After suffering heavy losses near the city of Bakuba, her unit was on a follow-up mission back to the same area. It was that mission where we came into a, a lot of trouble. We came into Brits, we had a long convoy of strikers, the engineers were out front, followed by my vehicle, the two engineer strikers in front. We came to a 90, 90 degree turn in the road and the, the first striker in the convoy was hit by an improvised explosive device which was located in one of the courtyard walls. That explosion pretty much twisted the striker and incapacitated it, so um, and a lot of the guys inside were hurt. While the second engineer, Stryker, worked to recover the soldiers from the destroyed vehicle, insurgents launched a rifle-propelled grenade at the recovery team and opened fire on the entire convoy from the surrounding rooftop. And they funneled us into this kill zone, basically. We couldn't move forward, we couldn't move back. We were having a lot of issues and we had a lot of wounded on our hands. And obviously it was more important for me to take up a gun than it was for me to take pictures anyway. So. During that time, I played a couple of roles. I was an NCO, non-commissioned officer, so my job was to make sure that I kept those younger enlisted guys calm and doing what they needed to do. Manning the 240 gun, providing cover fire for the recovery teams, and um, ultimately, medic. I mean, I was providing medical care for the wounded and everything all at once, I guess. For her actions on that long day in Iraq, the military presented Pearsall with a Bronze Star Medal the nation's third highest military medal given for valor in combat. But Pearsall has another notable accolade. She was the second woman ever to be named Military Photographer of the Year. Pearsall went on to be the first woman to receive the coveted title a second time. 